These games are great, but they're long overdue for a grown-up iteration. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 games we'd love to see a mature version of. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at games and franchises that we'd really like to see get an iteration or spin-off for mature audiences, whether it be through deeper, more complex stories and characters, added violence, or a combination of the two. Just for the record, we understand that most of these will never ever happen, but you know, it's fun to dream. It was obvious that there was some pervasive danger throughout the facility. Number 10, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. While the Force Unleashed games were slightly more adult than what we've seen from the franchise before, they don't live up to the full promise of really exploring the darker side of the Force. Now that Starkiller's story has been declared non-canon, it provides Disney and EA with new opportunities to inject some intense Force action into new stories and characters. It could combine the incredible graphics of 2015's Battlefront with the more mature, gritty direction of the cancelled Star Wars 1313. A more adult version of the Force Unleashed could give players insight into the Star Wars galaxy that the movies rarely provide. Number 9, Monster Hunter. Capcom's fantasy RPG is a beloved cult series, with players taking up the titular profession and getting out to slay some monsters and carve up their carcasses to make even larger weapons. As violent as the premise sounds, the series has never gotten any more gruesome than a T rating. Since the games aren't really known for their stories, the best way to revamp the series is to make it as visually dark and viscerally terrifying as possible. For example, a Devil Joe will actually be able to eat you, resulting in disgusting death animations. It's the best way to make an already epic series even more grand. Also, no more cat people. Number 8, Pokemon. There's no denying that as popular as the premise of catching and battling wild Pokemon is, there are some controversial topics that have stuck around over the years that these games just kind of gloss over. You know, cases like caught fighting, animal cruelty, kids fighting organized crime, and kidnapped Pokemon being used as slaves. Okay, well, Black and White did touch on that issue, but its argument was a very one-sided portrayal. Instead of ignoring these issues, maybe we should have a darker game that actually addresses these problems in an adult manner, thus treating the whole thing like a mature political dilemma, rather than, you know, portraying everyone as so optimistic that it's almost terrifying. Pikachu won't change. If it's going to Pika Raichu, it wants to do it just as it is. Number 7, The Legend of Zelda. Nintendo's signature fantasy series has always been pretty violent. Ending of the Wind Waker, anyone? Come on. But the darkest this franchise has gotten up to this point was 2006's Twilight Princess, with its more realistic graphics and a story that basically sent Link to hell. Meanwhile, you have the recently released Breath of the Wild, which was, while more whimsical than mature, it certainly does treat players like adults from a gameplay standpoint, due to the lack of hand-holding and a challenging difficulty level. Why stop there? Why not include more violence? Why not include more romance options for Link? Oh wait, <sighs> Zelda's name is on the box. Oh well, more drama then. You know, perhaps we could spend some time together. Number six, Soul Calibur. <laughs> this is a franchise where every character has a comically large sword or bladed weapon, and yet everyone still has their limbs. We want to see an installment of Namco's storied fighting series with some dismemberment, with Baldo slashing people's chests or Nightmare cutting people straight up in half. The story of the rival swords Soul Calibur, Soul Edge, and the fighters that use them could supply unexpected depth in a genre that doesn't usually prioritize plot, and it could flesh out some of the more interesting characters before, you know, showing what their flesh looks like. My own life is dead to me. Number 5, Fire Emblem. Looking for a more hardcore fantasy gaming experience? Fire Emblem is Nintendo's strategy masterpiece, a tactical RPG series with permanent deaths and complex fights. Despite the deep gameplay and depth of the stories, the game's visual styles have mostly been in the realm of anime. The epic story of characters like Marth, Roy, and Ike on their quest for the titular objects would be unforgettable with lifelike visuals to complement the high fantasy atmosphere of the games. Also, since romance options are a huge part of the Fire Emblem series as of late, how about some love scenes too? Come on. Number 4, Warcraft. What did she say? She begs for you to free her child. 
Back in 1996, when Warcraft 2 debuted, all the big retail PC games came in big shiny boxes, and they always contained awesome detailed game manuals. Warcraft 2 had an especially awesome one, and not because of the detailed breakdown of the game's functions and features. No, no, it was awesome because of all the sweet artwork inside. If you were to take a look at this stuff nowadays, you'd probably never guess that this grim, brutal imagery was the precursor to the same franchise that contains Pandarians and Hearthstone. Warcraft is now an ultra-successful, genre-spanning franchise. It would be so cool if we took all of that lore and crafted something with a little more emphasis on the war side of things. Don't try and take them on with brute force. They're stronger. Be smarter. Number three, Final Fantasy. <laughs> Unlike other games on this list, Square's Hallmark RPG franchise has dealt with mature themes for a surprisingly long time, as evidenced by the emotional gut punches provided throughout the sixth and seventh games back in the 1990s. However, despite the series' pedigree, it's known to delve into cartoonish tones from time to time. The best way to make a very mature Final Fantasy is to take it back to its roots as a basic sword and sorcery RPG with layered characters and a complex story, but with the incredible graphics and technical aspects of the most recent games and, of course, a little more blood. Again, most of these people are using giant weapons, and there's no injuries to show for it. That was a close call. Number 2. The Sims Creator Will Wright has referred to his legendary series as a dollhouse come to life, but there comes a certain point when making your sims swim and order coffee doesn't cut it for players anymore. For the next sims, how about we see characters face all the drama of real life? This could include relationship issues, financial problems, substance abuse, the list goes on. At the very least, it would be a fun and even cathartic experience for players to completely screw up the lives of their virtual world. I mean, if this doesn't happen in the main game, content like this could at least be introduced in an expansion pack. Number 1. Metroid The Metroid series has always been about one woman, Samus. 2010's Metroid Other M attempted to add more depth to the armored bounty hunter, but amongst interaction with other characters, it made her come off feeling like an insecure teenager rather than a fearsome bounty hunter. Metroid works best when Samus is on her own blasting aliens. The best way to update it would probably be like Metroid Prime, but with photorealistic graphics, where creatures ooze gross substances and Great looks like he can kill you just by looking at you, but also providing an intensely personal journey for Samus, told visually rather than through dialogue. Also, come on, who hasn't wanted to tear the head off a space pirate just once? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.